There it is. Beginning of historic Route 66. I'm in the 55. I'm Jeff Thisted. I just turned 55. I'm in my 55 Chevy and we are at the beginning. Beginning of Route 66. There you go. Not a lot of parking. Hey, see if I can get a picture here. Stop and park here for a moment. All right. I'm Jeff Fisted here in Chicago, the starter route 66. I just turned 55 a couple days ago. The 55's over there. I'm 55 and the 55. We're going to tackle route 66 from Chicago to LA. Come along for the ride. There's the beginning right there. A little rain in Chicago, never hurt anyone. 55's a driver. So there you go, another Route 66 sign, but this isn't just another sign. This is officially the very first Route 66 sign in Illinois. So the beginning is just right, right over there. You can see the 55, just right over there in that corner. But that's the official, first official sign, historic Route 66. <laughs> and we're off. Hey, there it is, Calder's Flamingo, downtown Chicago. All right, now we're turning on to Jackson. Jackson used to be Route 66, now it's one way, Adams is one way, so they split Route 66. This is Lou, there it is, this is Lou Mitchell's, it's right there. It's been around, it's been on the same corner since 1923 or in the same spot since 1923. There is no parking, otherwise I would stop and, uh, and partake. So that's Lou Mitchell's Route 66. All right, we're back on Adams and Adams is officially Route 66 going west towards California. And in order to stay on it, we've got to turn left. There it is, on Ogden. So make sure to make a left on Ogden and I've got my, uh, here it is, easy 66 guide. Yeah. Make that left. Here we are, historic Route 66 in Illinois, all right. There's another Lou Malnati's Pizza. You like that Chicago thick crust? That's the joint. Lou Malnati's thick crust Chicago style. All right. The old Sydney Lou Motel. Look at that mid-century. Sydney Lou who? I don't know. Look at that sign. Henry's Hot Dogs. It's a meal in itself. Love that sign. Back out on Ogden, Route 66. Here we are, McCook. If you go to Google Maps and Google welcome the fabulous McCook sign, <laughs> see what comes up. Steak and Egger. <laughs> we are in Willowbrook, Illinois, and uh, the road has seen better days. Uh, but it looks like they're uh, they're redoing it. Dell Ray's Chicken Basket. Love that sign. Get your chicks on Route 66, the chicken basket. 1939. Very cool. Roadside attraction. All right. I'm going to get a quick picture. <laughs> the size of that cock. Stork Route 66, 1946. You guys got to go and check it out for yourself. It's 
66. All right, 55 is ready to go. Store Route 66 and the Lincoln Highway intersection. Headed like that, we're in Joliet, Illinois. Uh, old Joliet prison up there. If you're a fan of the Blues Brothers, I did a video on that, so uh, check that out. Love the Blues Brothers. That's right up the road, just a little ways. But this is the intersection of Cass Street and Chicago. And the Lincoln Highway precedes Route 66 by uh, a few years. I think the Lincoln Highway is 1912. Somewhere around there, Route 66 is 1926. So, but this is where they intersected. I think the only place in the map that they intersect is here in Illinois, Joliet. Kind of cool stuff. Historic Route 66, Lincoln Highway. All right, we are. We're finally at a, uh, Joliet. Thank goodness. Chicago and Joliet, worst roads that I've been on. Horrible. I uh, think good of the roaster shop built some tough. So uh, we're out uh, uh, outside of Juliet. Hey, look at that. We're just motivating along. Beautiful little road. Old Highway 66. Gemini Giant, the launching pad. Oh, there you go. So there's the Gemini Giant. Gemini Giant, Wilmington, Illinois. We're coming into Braidwood, Illinois. And the Polka Dot Drive-In. It's been here for the, I think since the 50, I don't know when it's been here, I'm making that up. Good burgers, been here before. Polka Dot Drive-In. Historic Route 66. Sir, is this you? Uh, he, I think he's inside. Yeah? Awesome car, man. Thank it's you, awesome. sir. Awesome place. Historic Route 66. 
Got a visitor, Tom. I got a video going too, if you don't mind. Look at this. I'm, wow. I have a video. Yes. Oh, Thank you. Hi, Tom. I'm Jeff Distead. <laughs> Jeff, how are you doing? Never better. How are you, sir? Doing good. Yeah, check out his car, Tom. Wow. So, yeah, he's got nice. Uh, all right. Nice ride. Wow, this is a little overwhelming. <laughs> a little overwhelming. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> You had to start putting it on the ceiling. Fantastic. Yeah. Can you tell me a thumbnail history? Pardon? A thumbnail history of the place. A thumbnail history of the place. Well, yeah. this entire block used to have a lumber yard on it. It was built in 1895. This is a photo of it over here. <clears throat> what you look at right here. So it took up the entire block that you're on right now. Uh, this picture was actually taken about 1895. Where that tree is, that's where we currently are today. Okay. Well, my grandparents came here in uh, actually 1937. My grandfather managed this yard. <clears throat> he bought it in 46, ran it till 71. These pictures were taken in 71. These are my grandparents in the office right here. The window right there was the window right there. The clock hanging above the window right there is the clock that hangs in the front of the the off of the shop right now. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. You've been here ever since? Yep. Uh, when he sold the yard in 71, we built this on the back portion of the property. And uh, when he passed away, he left the building to my uncle. Uh, we had a little construction business we ran out of here then. Pretty bare bones. I bought the building from my uh, uncle 15 years ago. And uh, I worked on stained glass windows. So... I build all the cabinets in here. They're all full of stained glass. I still do make and repair windows, but uh, I'd be in here working. I'd see people out on the highway here in the road in front, and they get a little lost on where 66 went, where the jail was. Yeah. So I go out and talk to them. Uh, our youngest son and granddaughters live out in Vegas. So my wife and I have driven back and forth probably over 25 times over the years, and we tell people about other places to stop. 11 years ago, my oldest son made the Route 66 sign on the outside of the building. So people started stopping to take pictures. So we figured if they're going to stop, let's do something on the outside. So we started putting the Coke signs on the outside. People more stopped. I started keeping literature to give to people. So people started coming in. So eight years ago, we started doing this on the inside. Today, my wife kindly refers to this as my man cave, mini museum, tourist information center, sometimes workshop. Awesome. How often are you here? Uh, I'm here every day that I'm not doing something else. There you go. Very nice. Where can people find you online and where? Uh, well, I have a Facebook page. It's called Perkins Wooden Glass, so they can see us there. Okay. Uh, I post, uh, as people stop every day, I take their picture and put them on my page. And uh, if anything else is going on, I kind of post it. The days that I'm not here, I've got a sign on the door. I write on there where I'm at, if I've gone to a doctor's appointment or, or what may be happening. But uh, other than that, I'm here and we try to give people a little information on 66. You're the best. Thanks so much. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for keeping this place alive. Thank you. Look at this. Awesome. I'm going to go uh, the two-room uh, two jail is just uh, that away. cell jail is just down the street. All right. But uh, before, you, uh, before you leave, let me get your picture. And, and get All right. Picture. We're going to take some pictures here. So. All right, I got those two characters. Made some new friends here at the shop on Route 66. Look at the Burma shape sign. And right down the road from the shop is the historic two cell jail. Tom was saying nobody in Fort was ever locked up there. But when Paul McCartney came through town in the 60s, he signed the guest book. That's kind of cool. And then that's uh, an old diner that they moved to this location.
How are you? Yeah, this is the Dwight Information Center. How do you like that? Whatever happened to that laminated one? She's been a laminated. Yeah. I gave her copies. Time slips. Some of the newer pumps. Hello, I'm over here. Hey, how are you? Never better. How are you? Good. Hi there, I'm Jeff Fisted. Nice to meet you, Mary Flynn. <laughs> Mary, nice to meet you. Right. Uh, tell me about this place. Well, it was uh, given to the village in 1999 when the man that owned the it. The village of Dwight. Village not a town, not a parish, it's not a, a city. It's a village. It's a village. When the man that owned it built a station on um, the interstate and he turned his keys over to the village and we had it re re renovated to kind of look like a 1940s type station and uh, use it for a visitor center. It's staffed by volunteers and it's a lot of fun. Uh, how long have you been here? Working at the station? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, four or five years maybe? You must enjoy it. I do. We only work one shift a week, but uh, we meet a lot of very nice people from all over the world. Very good. Very good. Thanks so much sure. for keeping this place alive. Dwight's first motorized fire engine. Little flathead four. <laughs> Does it still run? Um, Bill, does the fire engine still run? Does the fire engine still run? No. We haven't had it started for a long time. No, it's, it's very cool. The bearings, right? Yeah. It's all about the bearings. Yeah. All about the bearings. Yeah. Guys, look at Thank you, sir. So built in 1933. Dwight Information Center, Dwight, Illinois, Route 66. Meeting nice people all over the place. Now we're off to the uh, 